expect a miracle. You have the power of choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Life Today Live. I'm Randy Robinson. Good to have you here on this Monday. And I, look, I got to set up this week by telling you that there is an event this Saturday that you need to know about. And I, it doesn't, doesn't matter if you've been a Christian your whole life. Maybe you're a newer Christian. Maybe you're not a Christian at all. There's something going on that will, I think, really help you. It will inform you. Uh, and, and then hopefully it will lead you into a better understanding of, of the Bible. And again, if you're not a Christian, I think this would be great for you because you might understand just why is it that Christians are like the way they are. Why do, why do they hold this book up in so much esteem? Well, I think this would answer your question. Of course, if you are a Christian, uh, you'd, just, you'd just get a lot from this. So check this out, and then we'll be right back to talk to the gentleman who is doing this event. Watch this. We'll be right back. Imagine yourself flying over a national park, taking in the hills and valleys that make up the beautiful landscape, giving you a sense of how they are all connected and what you'll experience on your journey, a perspective you can only get from high above. On October 16th, Pastor Colin Smith, founder and teaching pastor of Unlocking the Bible, will take you on a unique three-hour journey through the entire Bible story. You'll get the big picture of the Bible by meeting the five people you should know from the Old Testament, learning about five key events from the life of Jesus, and discovering the five gifts God gives to every Christian. The Bible is one story that begins in a garden, ends in a city, and all the way through points to Jesus Christ. By attending this virtual event, you will be better able to articulate this one story and be more equipped, confident, and motivated to share it with someone you care about. Find out more and register for this free virtual event at unlockingthebible.org slash open. That is coming up this Saturday, and uh, you can go to the website now and register for that. Uh, there's the website right there, and I'll tell you more about it. But right now, I have Colin Smith with me live to talk about it. Colin, welcome back to Life Today Live. Great to have you. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on the program. So what, uh, I mean, I, I, I get that, uh, you know, you teach about the Bible and stuff, but what what's, what's kind of separates this three-hour deal from maybe your average church sermon or something? <laughs> well, it's a place to uh, begin. And, uh, you know, when uh, our family's gone uh, to a part of the country that we've never been uh, to before, um, we often find it useful just to try and get the lie of the land. If we've got three or four days in a place, you know, what is there there to look at? Uh, how should we spend our time and so forth? If you can get the, the, the lay of the land uh, in, in the big picture, then it helps you and encourages you to, uh, to know how to make the best use of your, uh, your time there. And it's really like that with the Bible as well. Um, where do you begin? What should we be looking for? What should we, should we expect uh, to find? So we wanted to give people a place to get started, really a high altitude uh, overview of the Bible that you can get in less than three hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing this together, as uh, you said, Randy, on the 16th of October. And uh, we're excited about taking people on this journey. So I, one thing I, I find that kind of trips a lot of people up, whether they're Christians or non-Christians, is when they maybe kind of dive down into one book, like Leviticus especially, and they read one little thing and they go, ah, well, now I understand God and God's crazy. Or maybe they're a Christian and they read one little verse out of context and they think, okay, I don't think I know anything about God at all. How important is it that we, we sort of we understand the big picture so we can understand a lot of times, times the nuances. Yeah, well, I think what you say describes exactly uh, why an overview is so important, because um, if you start right down on the ground and uh, you just come to, say, a particular text, as you said, for example, in the book of Leviticus, uh, you are going to end up scratching your head and saying, how do I make any sense of this? Mm -hmm. Because you're not really sure what it is that you're looking at. <laughs> That's the advantage of taking a step back and, and saying, now, what actually is the Bible all about? And the big picture is that it is a progressive 
revelation or an unfolding in which God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit um, are made known to us in the Old Testament, the Gospels, and the New Testament letters. So seeing the big picture puts a person in a position where at least they've got some advantage when it comes to looking at things that are more difficult further down the line. Yeah, no doubt. Now, you mentioned that there are five characters in the Old Testament that, that we need to know. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of characters in the Old Testament, uh, a lot, probably a lot that are of great value, but why, why these five? Well, really, the Old Testament story revolves around God making himself known in essentially five great bursts of marvelous activity. And they revolve around, of course, first uh, Adam uh, and the creation. Then you have Abraham, where you have God making this marvelous promise that uh, through uh, his line of descent, blessing is going to come to all the families uh, of the earth. And then, of course, you've got Moses and you've got King David. And then at the end of the Old Testament story, you have a number of characters, and the best known of them would be Nehemiah. But if you can get the storyline of what happened in the lives of these five people and the significant events that surrounded them, that really does give you a broad framework for what the Old Testament story is all about. It, it, it runs through the lives of these five people. And so this is just a very simple way. Again, obviously, it's very high altitude. There's so much more there. <laughs> but you've got to start somewhere, and these five characters will give a person a broad outline of the whole of the Old Testament story. I, I am of the conviction that all of Scripture is about Christ, even yes. when he's not mentioned directly. And I, I do think that sometimes we, if we lose sight of that, it, it's, it's, almost, it, it's, it's almost like uh, you need that fixed point on the horizon to sail towards in order to, to get where you want to go. And I, I think a lot of people maybe don't, you know, they get involved in the stories and things like that. And if you lose sight of the fact that it, the Old Testament and the New Testament— the, everything from the Psalms to the law, it all, it's all pointing towards Christ. Um, but isn't, isn't that really the only way to read the Bible? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, uh, and most importantly, it's the way that Jesus read the Bible. We know that from uh, Luke's Gospel in chapter 24, where he opens up the Old Testament scriptures uh, uh. to these two disciples on the road to Emmaus and, and explains from the various parts of Scripture, how they all point uh, towards him. And I, I think you're exactly right, uh, Randy, that, that seeing that begins to make sense of the Bible uh, as a whole. I mean, just last Sunday, I was coming out of church, we into the parking lot, I was heading to my van, and um, uh, there was a guy uh, heading to his Harley Davidson motorcycle, mm -hmm. and he's just getting himself ready to get on his bike, and he says, oh, thank you for the service, and I got a question. And, and he said, I've always wondered, how were people in the Old Testament saved? And I said to him, well, you know, in the Old Testament, these folks were saved by looking forward to Jesus in the same way as we are uh, saved by looking back to Jesus. Their faith looked forward. Our faith looks back. And we know that because Jesus said of Abraham that Abraham saw my day. Jesus said that about Abraham. He rejoiced in it. He found joy in the fact that a savior would come. Clearly, he didn't know the name of Jesus or all the details of the cross, but he did know that God had promised a deliverer and he put his trust in that promise. So when you begin to see there really is one story here, it begins in a garden, it ends in a city, and all the way through it's about Jesus Christ, you begin to think, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe I can begin to understand what the Bible is about and come to know the living God through it. Yeah, that's good. I love that. We're talking to Pastor Colin Smith, uh, and he's got a website called OpenTheBible.org that he launched. It looks like this, and that's where you can register for this upcoming event this Saturday, October 16th, uh, virtual event. And if you can't do it during the time, uh, the, you still should register, and I'll let uh, Pastor Colin tell you why. Um, but if you happen to be up in the Chicago area, uh, you can check out the Orchard Evangelical Free Church uh, northwest of Chicago and, and hear Pastor Colin for yourself. But so explain real quickly uh, for those who are checking out the website, give them a little bit of a solid idea of what it is, if they can be a part of the event on the 16th 
and what they should do if they can't make that particular date? Well, again, it's a free event. You need to register to be part of it. Very simple on the uh, website. But if you can't be with us on the 16th, if you've registered, we'll give you free access on demand anytime that's convenient to you to all of this material so that you can use it at any time after the event on the, the 16th. We, we really, uh, Randy, want to encourage folks who are newer to the Bible to make a start. Hmm. But we also want to encourage people who know the Bible well to think about who you could reach out to yeah. and perhaps open the Bible with. I mean, I'm regularly asking people, who is there in your life uh, who needs to know the God of the Bible and just might be interested in opening the Bible with you if you were to invite them? And our folks in the church that I serve here are actually finding that that's a surprisingly easy ask. Mm. There are many more people, and surveys bear this out, many more people who are interested in knowing more about the Bible than we might think. I think that's one of the really encouraging things at these, uh, these days. You're not even asking people uh, to believe the Bible at this point. Just come and have a look. You know, in the Gospels, uh, we keep reading, come and see, come into this world of the Bible with uh, it's God who introduces himself to us as our creator and his people who mess up and get things so badly wrong and his endless patience to turn things around and bring us back to himself. Come and look at this world and see if you do not find for yourself that uh, to your great surprise, you sense that this God is actually speaking to you. Yeah, you know, and over the last year and a half, I've seen some surveys that talk about how more people are actually looking for answers and even maybe crack and open a Bible. You know, they're, they're yes. doing what your website suggests, which is open the Bible. Because of the, the you know, facing mortality, uh, the loss yes. of people uh, through COVID, the uncertainty obviously is a big part of it. I think it's just shaken a lot of where the places that people had security, and they realized, yes. oh, life isn't as secure as, as I thought. And a lot of them have looked to the scripture, at least that's what I've seen. I mean, as, as a pastor up in Chicago area, is that what you've seen? Yes, I think that's exactly right. And uh, for anyone who's saying, well, you know, um, we're living with all of these pressures in, in the world today. Uh, are you really saying that opening a book is the answer? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would want to say to that, well, remember that the Bible is unlike any other book. Um, uh, it is the word of God. That's what it claims to be. And we're inviting people to explore this and to, to, to look at uh, what it presents uh, to us. Uh, but Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So he's using this analogy. We, we all know that our bodies won't keep going well for, for long without being nourished. And he's saying, in the same way, we, we live in a world with all kinds of pressures. How are you going to stand up in that world? How are you going to endure? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus says, this is how you will find the strength, the comfort, the peace, the joy, the hope that you need. It's going to come to you through every word of God, every word that he speaks. Now, that's a reason for opening the Bible. We're not simply gathering information. We're receiving what God says and the way in which he mediates it to us is through his word. All right. I have a, I have a, here's my curveball question for the interview. I'm allowed one every interview. Uh, I, I didn't warn you of this. Uh, I actually don't know your uh, theological training or anything like that, so I, I don't know where you're coming from on this. But I'm curious because, um, you, you know, in the Southern Baptist Church, we, have, we, we believe in the Trinity of the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Bible. Um, and there's, there seems right there seems to be uh, a little bit of a of a distrust at least the way I grew up it's not this case all the time everywhere but there is a distrust of allowing people to hear God's word active in their lives and I don't mean by reading a scripture and going okay well, that applies to me but hearing God on a very intimate daily basis, which is really risky when you're dealing with people because people mess up and some people are weird. Um, when you talk about, <laughs> well, he's, he's laughing as you can't see him. Um, when you talk about, you know, God's word, yes, we're talking about the scripture, but is there more in, in your view than just scripture? Not that that's not enough, but is there more? 
Yes, well, I, I, God speaks to us through his word. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what, you know, when you talk about the Father, the Son, and the uh, and the Holy Scripture, <laughs> I like to think of it this way. You know, we, we often uh, think of the Old and the New Testament, and obviously there is that division. But I find it helpful to think of this, that in the Old Testament, God the Father makes himself known. Uh -huh. In the Gospels, God the Son is revealed. In the New Testament letters, we really have the unfolding of life in the Holy Spirit. That's true. And uh, all that is involved in that, uh, very wonderful as, as it is. Now, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit have always been, of course, always will be, as uh, was in the beginning and shall be forevermore. But yeah. the Bible unfolds to us um, who God is, uh, who we are, why we need Jesus, who he is, what he came into the world to do, um, uh, what he has accomplished, and what he's able to do in our lives today. And it, it's almost as if the Bible gives us progressive building blocks yeah. in, able, in, in order to enable us uh, to understand its own message. So, for example, if a person were to read John 3.16, uh, wonderful, wonderful verse of the Bible, God so loved the world. Well, the first word, God, well, who is God? Well, you see, the whole of the Old Testament has really been unfolding who this yeah. God is mm -hmm. and why we would need for him to send his son into the world, why that is the most loving thing he could ever possibly have done, because we're alienated from a holy God mm -hmm. um, uh, and have been since the beginning of time when Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden. So beginning to get the big picture enables us to make sense of what we're finding when we come not only to difficult verses in Leviticus, but even to wonderful verses like John 3.16. Yeah, and, and I think to, to questions that aren't necessarily spelled out in black and white in Scripture, such as, uh, you know, should, should I take this job? You know, should I, yes. should I marry this person? You know, these, these are practical questions we, we hit every day. I mean, for some people, they're like, should I get vaccinated? Uh, you know, uh, these are these are things we've had to face, and they're not. There's not. Uh, you can't turn to, you know, First Colin, two verse three, and it <laughs> says, "Thou shalt get vaccinated." You don't. You know, right? <laughs> we have to have a, a, a guide in that's living in today's world, and where do we get that? And that's the Holy Spirit. And how do you know Him? Well, you go back to what is written to get that's that foundation exactly right. to know the character. Yeah. Am I yeah. am I putting that together right? You think? No, I think that's exactly right. And uh, I'm very struck uh, too, Randy, by how often the scriptures speak of wisdom and uh, gaining wisdom is one of the great gifts of being immersed in the word of God. I mean, you have this in, in, in Psalm uh, 19, that the, 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 the word of God actually makes people wise. Well, that, that's what I need. That's what we all need in this world. We're having to make endless decisions on which there is no directive in the Bible. Um, uh, you've given particulars um, uh, of real decisions that uh, we're making every day in our life, and we have to make the wisest decisions. So I have to become a wiser person. Mm -hmm. And how do I become a wiser person? Well, the Word of God being drip fed into my life is going to increase yeah. wisdom and enable me to Romans 12 says, test and discern. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very important kind of skill. And the more the Word of God's drip fed into us, the better position we'll be in to do these very important things. I think that's exactly it, and that is why you guys need to go register right now. Uh, on the website for the event coming up this week, unlockingthebible.org slash open will take you straight there, uh, and you can be a part of it, whether you can be a part of it on the 16th or you just get access to the resources for later. That's up to you, but it will. This will. This will really help give you that foundation. Now, before I let you go, uh, Pastor, people call you Pastor Colin or Pastor Smith. I, I, <laughs> yeah, Pastor Colin, most Pastor often. Yes, yeah, sure. It, it's colorful. I like. I like that. I like the name Colin, by the way. Um, so the, uh, the you talk about uh, free gifts that God gives to every Christian, and and I got to say that when you start talking about free stuff, you, you get my attention. Uh, when you start talking <laughs> about free gifts, I just start getting a little excited. Yeah. When you start talking about free gifts from God, that's a whole other level of, wait a minute, and God actually wants to give them to me, and where do I get in line, right? Yeah. Give yeah, me a little sneak preview of a couple of those. Oh, ones? yeah, absolutely, <laughs> of course. 
Um, well, as you think about the Acts and then through to the rest of the New Testament letters, clearly the first gift that's presented to us in the Acts of the Apostles is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what a gift that is, that God would give the gift of his own presence into the life of a person who believes. And then the Bible speaks about faith as a gift. It is the gift of God. We're called on to believe, and yet it is a gift from God. Forgiveness is his wonderful gift. Oh, the church oh, that's, is God's gift. That, 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 forgiveness is a, is a gift that a lot of people need desperately but don't necessarily want. Yes, yes, yes. But I think the good and, news about that one, if I, sorry, you get me excited. You get me excited here. You, the good, good news about that one is <laughs> forgiveness is one that I need that I can't do on my own. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, that's sorry. exact. That's exactly right. So the Holy Spirit, faith, forgiveness, the church is a wonderful gift given to every believer, the bride of Christ. And of course, the last gift is heaven itself. So you're right. A free gift is marvelous. But when you say free gift of God, you know, you're talking about something absolutely spectacular. And uh, the New Testament letters are just full of these wonderful, wonderful gifts. Even when you talk about the Holy Spirit, we, we see what what happens when we have the Holy Spirit. Well, suddenly we, we get things like, you know, kindness and patience and self-control, all these things that I have a real hard time just you know, ginning up on my own, in my own yeah. power. And so to be able to get these things that I really do want, if you get right down to it, I really do. I want to be able to love my wife like I should. You know, sure. I want to have the self-control to not do some of the stupid things I've done in the past. Uh, and, and so when you say, okay, well, you can have that free gift of the Holy Spirit. And out of that, I will have more self-control. I'll have more love. I'll be a kinder, gentler, and even the wisdom, I mean, I, it's almost baffling. When you put it this way, it's almost baffling why anybody would say, ah, I don't have time for that, or ah, I don't really care, I don't really need it. I mean, these seem like things that people would line up for. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And uh, uh, so uh, first, uh, we want to invite uh, uh, folks to, uh, to open the Bible. Yeah. And then want to encourage if you have come to know and love Christ and you have some knowledge of the word, who is there in your life who needs to know the God of the Bible and just might be willing to open the Bible with you if you ask them? Uh, I just want to keep encouraging people to consider that. Because I think we live in days of tremendous opportunity because of what uh, you were saying earlier, Randy, that uh, surveys repeatedly show that there is a greater openness to uh, learning more about the Bible, discovering what people now perhaps realize they don't know, and perhaps they're just beginning to wonder, maybe I've missed something that's really important. Mm. Oh, yeah. Boy, that's a, that's, a, that's a realization when you hit that in your life. Uh, and, and I think it's a, a good one when you turn to the Scriptures for the answer. So, Pastor Colin Smith, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the, the work. I know this is work. Uh, and, and, and I appreciate you going through the effort to do it because I know you're going to reap some rewards. You're going to see lives change. God's Word does not come back empty, void. It, it has an effect. Thank you. appreciate what you're doing. Well, likewise to you. Thank you so much for having me on the program. Did I hit everything? Is there anything that I didn't mention? Any websites? Or Okay. We got eight. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, engaging with it so warmly. And it's always a joy to speak with you. I hope we can do it again sometime. Uh, absolutely. Uh, anytime. I love it. Uh, you're, you're, you're high on my list. You're, you're a pleasure to, to speak with. <laughs> I can tell you love Jesus and you have a great accent on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> and appreciate all you guys out there watching, hanging out. Hit share, hit like, hit follow, hit subscribe, hit everything you can, and be sure to hit the website there, URLs on the screen, and, and you can help uh, open the Bible for yourself and for other people and enjoy it. And we'll see you again next time here on Life Today Live. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. In spite of our rebellion, in spite of our sins, in spite of our failures, God says, I love you. I love you. I love you.